and the tragedy in the use or the obsession in words or concepts or pointers is to get all tied up, to get lost in the pointers. We are back, baby, with another reflection on the daily Badonka Dunk. Today's reflection is on, as Alan Watts used to put it, trying to articulate the inarticulable. Trying to F the ineffable. As every poet tries to do. I am surely not a poet, but that is certainly what the greatest poets, the best they can ever do is get close to pointing at that which can never be put in words. That is the best of us and the best of concepts are just pointers to that which cannot be put into words. The language of God is... uh, Well, it is an impossible task to try to describe, to even try to name God. At best, it can be a pointer, but sadly, at worst, at worst, the nightmare is that we get stuck in these words. We lean on them build our lives around them. And we get stuck in the pointers, obsessed with the pointers instead of ever seeing what they are pointing at. That is, in many ways, the conventional approach to religion is so stuck on words and concepts. And this philosophy, we did an episode recently about the moon branch example, where you point towards a branch You can't see the moon. You point towards a branch and you say, you see that tree right over there? See that branch? It goes up high and to the left. Follow to the edge of that branch and keep looking. And then you see the thing instead of a branch that's 40 feet away. You see a thing that's hundreds of thousands of miles away. All from seeing something clearly that's 40 feet away, but knowing that what you're really looking for is past that pointer, not getting stuck at the edge of the branch and remaining hundreds of thousands of miles away from the thing that you're actually supposed to see. The language of God. What does this philosophy, what language does this philosophy use to describe the divine, the supreme? These are the English words. The divine, the supreme, objectless awareness, awareness itself, pure consciousness, the infinite. Well, the Sanskrit words would be om, which is actually spelled not just O-M, but uh, it's actually spelled A-U-M, most classically. And it's important that it's spelled in that way because it is, it's symbolic of where the sound starts, ah, Deep down, center of our chest, ah, uh, ooh, further in our throat, and all the way to our lips, om. Um. It is the full breadth of how we can and do use language and speech. It's also symbolic. The A is symbolic of deep sleep. The U is symbolic of dream state. The M is symbolic of our waking state. And truly classically, the divine is right in the silence, right after Om. Not in a syllable, not in a word, but in the silence right after. That is so cool. It's such a moon branch example. So cool to think about as a concept, a philosophical concept of God is it's the silence, which is not nothing. Let's be clear. Silence is not nothing. Silence is the listening tied to yesterday's episode, the listening for everything that is. 
moon branch example is not saying when you get to the end of the branch, there's nothing. It's saying when you get to the end of the branch, you leave the branch to see what's beyond it. You finally see that which you are trying to see, the moon. Similarly, the word for God, supreme, divine, and this is not a personified God. This is the unmanifested, non-personified form, not uh, uh, deification in some symbolic form, not certainly not the Western sense of some big white guy a thousand feet up with a gray beard and four arms and big hands. None of that. It's quite, quite subtle uh, versus those gross uh, kind of childlike, I don't mean gross disgusting, I mean just um, gross versus subtle personified articulations of the divine. I mean, this is the subtlest of the subtle, the absolute tip of that branch. And even then it goes right beyond the branch into the silence, right beyond Om. The Supreme is also called Brahman, which is Sanskrit for the word the vast. And again, we can get so hung up on Brahman, that sounds foreign to the word I use God. God is such a tricky term because it can have so much baggage in our heads of all the thousand people before us that had their versions of what God was and try to put it in our heads when. This whole exercise, this whole episode, but also the whole philosophical exercises that these things cannot be spoken of, cannot be captured in language. After all, a God defined is a God confined. So it cannot be captured in language. And even these words, these symbolic approaches, I've just never seen anything as deep as these Vedantic approaches to even articulating that which cannot be articulated. The silence on the other side of Om, or Brahman, the vast, basically the infinite. It's not anything close to something that can be personified. When you use the term the, the vast, the infinite, then by definition it's just symbolic pointer to that which cannot be defined. After all, if you're saying the Supreme is infinite, then there isn't anything that the Supreme isn't. You can't have God being infinite and then saying, well, God's infinite. And this is just a rational explanation of the illogical nature of describing the divine in some dualistic way of saying God's separate from us, which again is the conventional, traditional explanation in the West in the conventional approaches to Judeo-Christian Islamic faiths is that God is dualistic. And yet each one of these has the tradition within them of the non-dualistic approach. Christian mysticism, uh, Hesychism, Greek Orthodox Church, the Judeo tradition of Kabbalism, Islam and Sufism, they all have these non-dual approaches. It's oneness with the divine because, well, quite logically, if the divine is infinite, if God is infinite, there isn't anything that isn't God. You can't have the infinite and then say, well, it's infinite, but there's a border around this table where God is not this table, or there's a border around James's skin where God stops and James begins. That's irrational. But the mistake of giving it a personified identity, giving it a name, leaning on that name, thinking that that's what God is, this solid linguistic character you can really knock on, lean on, visualize, is to get away from the oldest descriptions of the divine. The oldest descriptions that take us from anything we can comprehend point us to the vast or anything that we could say 
and take us away from the experience of the divine through silence. Pointers and articulations are helpful, but they're just pointers. And the tragedy in the use or the obsession in words or concepts or pointers is to get all tied up, is to get lost in the pointers instead of getting where we really want to go. And the tragedy of getting caught up in words and concepts or pointers, the tragedy, the absolute catastrophe of that. So we get stuck in the pointers instead of seeing what we're trying to see. That's today's reflection on the Daily Vedantic. We'll see you next time. Thank you.